know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. All of this is the Actors Fund. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. reasonably sane and well-balanced person and congratulations for that. You know who you are and what your life's all about until you get around your mother and her agenda. I'm really sorry therapy didn't fix that for you. So I find myself asking the question, why would your mother invite you to a family gathering? She has an aversion to gatherings. Hell, she hates people. Why would she invite you to her 4th of July birthday celebration? And she invited the entire family, whom you said is like gum stuck to the bottom of your shoes. I don't know. Oh, go. What could possibly go wrong? Hi, I'm Sheila Rainier. I'm the playwright who penned this full-length comedy, so when are you leaving that you're about to experience? I hope you enjoy it. Thank you to everybody who's made this event possible. Actors Fund, we love you. So When Are You Leaving? by Sheila Rainier. Setting, Maggie Dunleavy's coastal resort home. There's a living room on one side of the stage, dining area on the other, and sleeping area is off one side, kitchen is off the other. Summer, 4th of July week. Act one, scene one. Listen, you can hear the loud fireworks boom. Look at these as they sparkle through the darkness. Can you see the crowds of people? Like most fireworks audiences, they are screaming their delight. Their screams kind of echo against the sound of the crashing ocean surf. Listen, oops, what's that? I hear a helicopter overhead. It's shining its multicolored lights in various directions, but Let's focus our attention on two of the excited fireworks spectators, Bridget and Betty, who hold little American flags. They're symbols of patriotism. A loud voice blasts from the helicopter. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to now focus your attention on the surf where there seems to be some kind of commotion. Bridget points to the ocean in total amazement as the very recognizable opening chords of the Jaws theme play loudly. Both Bridget and Betty watch first thrilled and then as though not believing what they're watching as it is obviously getting scared. Splashing water and girls' screams are heard. Bridget screams and faints into Betty's arms. Blackout. Let's look in on Maggie Dunleavy's coastal home just down the street from the event Bridget and Betty are attending. Loretta, freshly manicured and hairstyled, humming a cheery tune, enters from the kitchen carrying a cake box which she almost drops when a fireworks boom sounds. Loretta sets the cake down, reaches into a cabinet, grabs a bottle of gin, pours some into a glass and drinks. She hears something at the front door. Bridget and Betty enter. They do not see Loretta. Bridget starts hunting through cabinets in the living room. Betty calmly takes her jacket off and hangs up. I need a drink. I need a drink. That was so scary. They really looked like sharks at first, didn't they? Uh, I need a drink. I need a drink now. Stop it. Come on. You know you can't have one. Loretta lifts her glass in a greeting, surprising Betty. Hi there. I take it you two are at the fundraiser over at the beach. 
The local kids did their reenactment of Jaws out in the surf. I'm guessing that's what we just witnessed. It, it was it was awful, Loretta. They had synchronized swimmers with shark fins on their back circling some poor girl while she screamed out for help. I think it's really cute and clever. EMS gets the proceeds. You've seen it? The rehearsals? Yes, I've, I've seen. What kind of idiot would dream something like that up? It's not patriotic. Or is it? <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce came up with it. Aren't you on the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, I am. And we like to offer tourists more than a Seuss abandoned fireworks for entertainment the week of the 4th. But the band and the, and the fireworks are traditional and this town is so traditional. People love the fireworks. We try to keep an open mind about what people love. Amen, sister. Minds are like parachutes. They only work if they're open. Loretta lifts her glass in affirmation at the same time she's sliding the bottle of gin back into the cabin. Loretta, I've missed you. The 4th of July, the band, the blessed fireworks. Bridget keeps trying to reach into the cabinet holding the gin. Loretta blocks it by standing firmly in front of it. You haven't seen fireworks in 25 years. Come on. Here. I've missed the fireworks here at home. <laughs> I thought the fireworks stopped around here when your father died. Too soon. Sorry. May he rest in peace. Anyway, welcome back to our world, Bridgie. Just for the record, I did not believe a single word that frigging Mother Superior said about you in court. But it was the Archbishop who said all the nasty stuff, but thanks. Your sup means so much to me. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't here to open up for you. It took me a long time at the salon. Guess it takes longer as you age. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, we found the key under the mat. You're Bridget's friend. I am. How do you do? Uh, this is Betty. We met in uh, group therapy. How nice. Uh, no, she's my sponsor. Just another friend of Bill W's. Can't say I know who that is. Someone you'll probably need to meet someday. Bridget, hey. should your mother have been home from the airport by now? Holiday traffic's probably slowed things down. I am so proud of you for being so upbeat in spite of the fact that Jackie's bringing his new wife with him, Loretta. I mean, I guess you've gotten past the fact that she's so... She's not coming in. Oh, I, I, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure Shania was invited. Perhaps she was invited, but Shania wouldn't dare set foot here on my turf. I thought you lived several blocks away, Loretta. I do when I'm not here, taking good care of Maggie. My mother actually lets you take care of her? She never shook that bad cold she had last winter. So me being pushy told her that her nutrition sucks. I insisted on making her smoothies and Nutriblast. Listen, if you like Nutriblast, QVC has got this deal on- I hate them. Hate them. Right. Okay, ha. See, there I go being pushy. You're not, you're not pushy, Loretta. You're a saint. Mom usually doesn't want anyone doing stuff for her. She even asked me to get her a birthday cake. So I got that over there and I do know your mother. It's not like her. She would want anyone to remember her birthday, let alone get her a cake and inviting us to celebrate. I mean, it's very strange. Well, maybe it's not a birthday cake. Maybe mom is having a surprise celebration to welcome me home. But then it would be all about you, wouldn't it? Sweetie, no, 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 she's got an agenda. I just haven't figured it out yet. You're trying to clean up the wreckage of the future. Is it possible Maggie simply wants to see her family? Have everyone come home and visit, party, have a good time? Nah. She wanted a coastal theme, she got coastal. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> Looks like a tsunami. <laughs> Are you sure it's a birthday cake though? There's no writing on it. Put a freaking candle on it. It'll look like a birthday cake, okay? But I will put a firecracker up Shania's ass. If you're, not on, you're not comfortable with Jack's new wife coming. He would not do that to me. But what if he did do that or does do that? 
Mm. You want to talk about it, Loretta? Mm. Betty helps me talk through. Mm, uh, nothing uh, to talk through. I am fine. I got the updated version of I'm okay. You're not on QVC. It's all I need as far as books go. QVC is a self-help organization? Oh, QVC, that's right. Bridget told me you like the stuff they sell. I, uh, I bet your outfit is, I mean, wow. <laughs> QVC, really terrific. I know, right? Loretta astonishes me with her constant coordination of high fashion. That's how the captain introduced me when I came to the table during my last cruise, astonishes. I've never felt so honored in my life and I owe it all to QVC. Best thing that's happened to TV and me. I think QVC and I can work miracles for you too, sweetie. You are really engaged with life, Loretta. Good for you. And good for you for enjoying your gin, which you think we actually believe is water, Loretta. <laughs> Just because you don't have ice and a lime in your glass. Sweetheart. I'm sorry, I thought I shouldn't be flaunting the fact that I can drink and you girls can't anymore. <clears throat> Very thoughtful, disturbing and thoughtful. Please get down and say nothing. Could you take that off? Daddy loved when I put things on my head that made me look like a nun. <laughs> he said the habit gave nuns immediate respect. And that is important right now because... Because if I were still a nun, I wouldn't have to worry that it sounded like Loretta was disrespecting me about drinking. Oh, honey, honey, I meant no disrespect except for you. I never cared for those she-wolves in nun's clothing. I constantly told your mother and your brother that you did not belong in the convent. Yep, I blame that institution for all that's wrong with you. What's wrong with me? Not a thing. That can't be fixed. Let's hope so anyway. A car hogs. <sighs> They're here. That's how Maggie signals me to open the garage door. Be right back. Deep breath, Bridget. Let it go. But did you hear what she called nuns? She wolves? She had a different experience with nuns than you did. And why would Loretta have a set of house keys to my mother's house? I don't. You haven't lived here in like 25 years. She sounds like she's from New York, am I right? So she knows something about squatters' rights. No, L Loretta doesn't live here. She has her own house. Her Down name's in the suitcase. Keep it simple, Nancy Drew. Maybe you have to prove yourself to your mother. You said yourself that everyone's gotta earn your mom's respect before she'll even spit on them. Jesus spit dirt and made mud to heal a blind man. Maybe I should do that for Loretta. What? Why? Loretta always makes choices that turn out badly and she doesn't even see she's doing it. That kind of blindness, that's kind of blindness, don't you think? She's up to something right now, I can feel it. Getting all fixed up at the salon. Isn't it possible Loretta's simply trying to look nice for your mom's birthday or for your brother? No, she says mom's up to something, but it's her, she is. Why would you say that? I know it sounds mean and slanderous and I'll have a hard time finding any priest taking confession so I can confess my wrongdoing or thinking. They all do this communal penance now and if Take I- Take a breath, will you? And while you're exhaling, let it all go. Let go of knowing Loretta takes advantage of people, my people, my family in particular. She sounds like she's genuinely fond of you. Once she asked me to keep her kids, the twins, at the convent for the weekend because she wanted me to, this is what she said, she wanted me to teach them how to pray. You were a nun for God's sake. But she forgot to mention that she was flying to Vegas for the weekend. At least you got some time with your niece and nephew. Kids are so cute when they're little. Betty listens, they while, she, time. Betty listens while she examines the captain's bell from a ship. 
Whoa, wouldn't I love to see the boat this came off of? That's mom's pride and joy. The man next door I gave it to her. He used to have it on his boat. Looks like more like something you'd see at a boxing ring. Uh, step away from the poison, Bridget. Fine, whatever. I feel sorry for you having to be my guardian angel. I'm glad you appreciate my help. We only keep our program by giving it away, okay? Uh, while we're on the topic, I should remind you that it's not easy coming out of rehab. I can see you're being a little oversensitive and that's normal. I hate being this way. Of course you do, but I'm here to try to help you be strong. Let's go sit down and do some yoga breathing. No, I'll die if you make me do that again. Stop whining right now. Okay, I've got a better idea. Let's have party hats on and hide and yell surprise when they come in. Your mother went to the airport to pick up your brother and his wife so they can be here for her birthday. And he knows you're here. Is there any surprise in all of this for anyone? Yes, when we jump out and yell surprise, there will be. And they've never met you, right? Please, please don't look like that. Don't you wanna have fun? All I want is for everyone to have fun. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. I just reminded you how your nerves are a little wobbly now. Adjusting to life without alcohol or sedatives? We good here? Great, come on, let's hide. And please remember to introduce me by my chosen name and not Betty. Absolutely the worst airport traffic I've ever tangled with. Oh. Sorry, Mom. I kind of like the experience of being caught in Philadelphia rush hour. I took notes. Maybe we should have flown into Newark. Uh, no, Newark is Philly on crack. I want no part of that turnpike. So much luggage. Looks like you plan to move in. Never thought I'd hear myself say I'm glad you've kept that old van of Jake's, Mom but I'm glad you did. <laughs> the true believer's chariot. Mm. <laughs> Jake always called it that. You've kept it in great shape. I'll put all our stuff in my room. No, don't. I'm staying in that room. You are? Why? Well, it's the only room with a, both a TV and a landline phone and a computer hookup. With all these people in the house, we're definitely going to need to order items. I know how. Order items? UVC, they've got everything. But Amazon Prime is so much faster. Oh, Amazon Prime, what? Loretta's visit is just a temporary situation. Well, thank you for the clarification, Maggie. So when are you leaving, Loretta? Probably whenever I damn well feel like it. Right, no worries, my lovelies. I have it all planned out. Jackie, Shania, you're in my room. And you're in Bridget's old room? Uh, the guest room, no. Uh, Bridget and her friends are in there. I'm in the sunroom. Mom, don't put yourself out like that. Is it still that old dinky little day bed out there? Jack and I should sleep there. Uh, wait till you see it. I've just redone the sunroom. Like that, well, kind of. I'd like to be, you know, out there. That's beautiful. We'll all want to be out there. Jackie says you drink a lot of gin, Loretta. Make mine scotch, will you? <laughs> I wonder where Bridget got to. Yet, if we wait a little longer, it'll have a magical effect on them. If we wait any longer, they'll send out a search party. One, two, three. Surprise! I know you aren't truly surprised, Mom, but I want this celebration to be so much fun for you. <laughs> well, actually, I am surprised, sweetheart. To find you huddled behind the sofa in my living room with a stranger, I can only hope is your friend, Betty. It is. Oh. It is Betty. Yeah. See, I told you Mom was psychic. <laughs> she guessed who you were. <laughs> we got in a couple of hours ago. That's, that's Betty's car out front. Our, our luggage is still in it. And I guess it was her car when we drove up. She really is. Mom's psychic. 
it's you I've missed the most, <laughs> even more than the fireworks. You're one of Bridget's nun friends? Still traveling in pairs, I see. But she's Betty. Uh, sh she's no nun. <laughs> Actually, I'm a Spara. Oh, uh, oh my gosh. I, so, oh, sorry. I, I meant to introduce you that way, Aspera. Isn't that a wonderful name? It's her name when she does the comic thing. Comic? Uh, wait, I had a feeling. Wait, uh, what with your quick repartee, your stand-up comic, Betty? No, Comic Con. But please, call me Aspera. I much prefer that to Betty. Completely understandable, au spondif. Aspera! You must be Jackie's current wife, Shania. I am. And you're a drummer. I am, but I'm trying to transition to writing. Uh, Shania's never met a carpal tunnel challenge she wouldn't take on. <laughs> <laughs> So, Shania, I had no idea you were coming in, too. Well, I wouldn't want to miss meeting you and seeing that wardrobe I've heard so much about. <laughs> PVC? Mm -hmm. Well, you look great, <laughs> Loretta, all dressed up. Uh, you had a Chamber of Commerce meeting? Well, uh, Loretta's uh, recently become the creative consultant to the Chamber for all their fundraising entertainment. Uh, Loretta, tell them about the little skid um, in the surf you came up with. <laughs> oh, this sounds familiar. Something about all this sounds familiar. Bridget, how about we go get our luggage? Okay, yeah. I'm so glad to be here as a member of this family. I never want to miss an opportunity to celebrate this remarkable woman. Here's to Maggie Dunleavy. Oh. Hi. Like that, are you? Hmm. Look, Shania, I don't want us to get off on the wrong foot. It's nice to meet you. I've heard about you from my kids, those two children that Jackie and I created and raised, two young people who used to call me mom. They probably still would if you ever called them or returned their calls. You have no idea what my schedule is like. I do. <laughs> I've seen you up close and personal 24-7 for... But as oh. I was telling tonight, it was interesting to learn my children enjoyed spending the holidays out there with you. Well, those two are so much fun. <laughs> yes, we had great holidays. I'm sad you did not accept our invitation to join us. And why would I? You're living in the house my kids grew up in when I was their mother? You will always be their mother, right? Uh, and I believe it's healthy that they love me and I love them, right? You might have broke my heart a little if they hated you. Well, <laughs> that's just her gin talking, Shania. Oh, my gin also wants to say, imagine how pleasantly surprised I was to hear they liked you. So replying to your gin, I'll just say, you can imagine how pleasantly surprised I was to discover that both your children were decent human beings. <laughs> Do not let her back you into the boxing ring. I warned you she'd be here and ready for a takedown. I mean, watch this. The master will not get sucked into her traps. We all can hear you, Jack. Then let's step over here, shall we? In spite of all that bling and possibly some expensive plastic surgery, you are looking well, Loretta. Of course I am. I can't help it. How are you? Here's how I am. I'm hoping you'll back off. Off. We're simply trying to act civilized here, okay? I mean, I tell you I'm fine, and when I ask you how you are, you say... I'm fine. Broke, but fine. How can you possibly be broke? You used up the kids' college tuition for your wanderlust trips to meet your e-match losers. I only to trip, took trips that my swami advised me to take for healing purposes. I'm suffering from abandonment issues. Which you worked very hard to earn. And the next time you're talking to that bozo guru, ask him if he plans to pay for the trips and your QVC habit. I'll ignore that. Oh, please don't. You've used up all the money you got from our divorce settlement and the money intended for the kids, haven't you? Now that you mention it, Quentin, your son, our son, Quentin needs some help with, your, with his student loan debts. Doorbell rings. He shouldn't have any student loan debts to pay off since my saint of a 
the mother and I gave him and you all the money he could possibly need. There is more to supporting a child in college than the tuition. There are doctor bills. What? The kid's healthy as a horse. Besides, he's still on my insurance. Ah, <clears throat> uh, the twins are grown up now, Loretta. You don't pay their way in any way. They're only 23. When we were 23, we were their parents already, and I was supporting all of us. Yes, we know all about your supporting youngsters, Jackie, with, with your... Her to take care of. She looks about the same age as our children. No, I'm about 15 years older than they are. It's just my flawless complexion and sex appeal that make me look so young. This came for you, Loretta. A double bourbon for you, Maggie? No, I'll take a V8. Uh, what's in the package this time? The key VC2, Maggie. I got it for you. I'll put it in the sunroom. Bridget! Want me to help bring in the rest of the groceries? I, I, I would love to do that. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Astral. Oh, it's not Astral. It's Aspera. Ah, uh, yes, Aspera. Uh, check out my birthday cake with me, will you? Does that look like a beach scene to you? Honestly, it does look like a beach scene during a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you how grateful I am to you for taking my daughter under your wing? Oh, I'm happy to bring some light to Bridget's fears. Fears? Well, yes, I see your point. She must have many. Fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. So really? You're not a nun? No! I'm helping Bridget transition into a new way of life. Getting her onto the high road to freedom. Yes! The doorbell rings. I'll get it! So are, are you uh, a nurse, psychiatrist, guest speaker? From what my mom tells me, Bridget could use one of each. I've never seen her so strung out. And when did she start talking so much? She's always been like a, like a mouse, quiet and calm. I'll bet it was just the wine and not her nature making her act that way. Hey, I'm just saying. Mom, this must be costing you a fortune. I am breaking my anonymity here, but I am sponsoring your sister Bridget in AA. It's a free service. I received without cost and now I give without charge. Whoa, whoa, wh what? Mom, what happened? Well, your sister has a drinking problem. And trust me when I tell you that I know which parent she got that genetic predisposition from. Now don't go blaming yourself. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> the love of well, better. <coughs> oh, here, here, take this. Mm. You better. <sighs> good, good. So, so what? So, so Bridget started drinking when they threw her out of the convent. Well, actually, the Archbishop, in the name of the Church, threw her out of the convent because she was drinking too much. Thank you. Mm. What are you waiting for? Really? You know, I never tip. Get out of here. Can they do that? She gave them the best years of her life. You know, she probably stood up to them and asked them about her retirement benefits for the 20 some years of teaching. You know, wait, it's because they don't have any benefits. They threw her out, am I right? Well, your sister stand up to someone? I think about that, son. Yeah. Well, someone should have organized those poor destitute selfless nuns into labor unions decades ago. Well, all I know is that the diocese says They've put her through rehabilitation seven times, and when she relapses last time, they concluded she's my problem. Seems she got the diocese in trouble with the vineyard who supplies all the altar wine. Well, for crying out loud. She was trading back a, a bunch of the altar wine for the vineyard's finest Merlot, which she kept for herself. Oh, man. That's... What is that? Clever? Shrewd? Criminal? <laughs> no, no, that, that's hearsay. Actually, it's what the archbishops say. The diocese was going to sue the vineyard for overcharging when they looked at the account sheets. That is so wrong on so many. No, levels. it's been going on for 20 years. Try to act like you don't know any of this, all right? I think she's embarrassed. 
asparagus is here because I thought having everyone around this weekend drinking would be tough on Bridget. Sarah, <coughs> Mrs. Dunley. Oh, thank you, dear. So, wait a minute. Bridget's living here, too? Well, where else is the poor lamb going to go? We're getting her back on her feet. Yeah, uh, good. Okay, I, I just don't understand why she'd... I think it's because she's lost. Aspergum, you are wonderful helping her find her way. Please don't think me negligent. I've just been so busy. I Taking care of this place? Mm. Living in the here and now? This is a big house and property for anyone young and healthy to take care of. But for a mature, older person, I don't know how you manage. <laughs> I saw you've still got the garden going out back Yes, now. the herbs in the sunny shade, perennials on the bright sunlight. Ah, the blueberries and peaches over there. They're ripening up much sooner than usual. Ah, oh, the lawn, as much as it breaks my heart, because I've been mowing that lawn all these years, I'm going to have to hire someone to do it. Not while I'm here. I'll, I'll be glad to do it. You know, I've been trying to hire Mama Lawn Man for 10 years. Maggie Dunleavy, you're a stubborn woman, you are. <laughs> well, I don't want you to do the lawn, honey. You're so reckless with the mower. Uh, Jackie, could you take a gorgeous front yard glistening in the dew christened morning sun and turn it into a patch of something that looked like dog mange by mid-morning? Never understood how you manage such transformations like that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a gift, Mom. <laughs> yes, well, one you should give back. All I ever wanted was a straightforward Victorian cottage at the shore kind of lawn. The way you hacked the hydrangeas always made the garden look like an origami project gone bad. <laughs> mom, 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 stop. Stop, you're, you're killing me here. So, uh, so Spartina, enough about us. Tell us about yourself, please. Oh, there's not a lot to tell, except it's a Spera. And I was born in Chicago and I um, had, I'm the youngest of five. Um, Loretta, you are so much taller than you look in pictures. What the heck is in the Acme bags, mom? They're heavy. Oh, sugar, canning wax. Um, I've got to get the blueberries and peaches picked and they're almost ready for making preserves. Will you please show me how to make preserves, Maggie? I've always wanted to do off the chart domestic stuff like that. Doorbell rings. I get it. Try not to trip. Why don't you take one? Really, Shania? You, you wanna make preserves? Absolutely. Research for a character I might use one day in my writing. But yes, I would really love to help you. Me too. I'll help make preserves. It's so nice of you both to offer, but I probably won't get to it until next week is the only thing. <laughs> uh, that is a full week away. Well, I'll pencil it in. <gasps> wow, fun. I haven't canned or made preserves since. Either. You'll show us what to do, right, Maggie? I could do that, or you could read the Smucker's recipe I follow. Uh, I'll make copies for you and send it to you. Oh, no need to send it. I'm a real hands-on learner. I like to learn by watching. <sighs> so when are you all leaving? Lights fade. Scene three is now one week later. It's a very early morning. Lights up on Maggie quietly entering the living area, wiping her hands off with a cloth. She begins to cough and it gets worse. <laughs> she reaches for a purse hanging on a chair, takes an inhaler out and uses it to settle her cough down. She sits down off in the shadows just as Betty and Bridget enter the house. They don't see her. See? Nobody else is up yet. Let them sleep in. Again? Sure, why not? They've only been drinking whatever the heck they want and then they sleep in. It's been going on all week. No wonder they're all so darn happy. I'd be freaky happy too if I could drink and sleep in and not have to get up and go someplace at the crack of dawn to remind me that I cannot drink and sleep in. Keep your sobriety first to make it last. Not another slogan. I can't take it, Spar. Are you complaining? 
that you have a live-in sponsor who is delighted to get up and take you to early morning meetings every day of this past week, I might remind you. And I'm coaching you in the ways of living an effective life. It's like you've had a bodyguard all week, which you've needed. Sorry. I like to think of you more as a guardian angel instead of a bodyguard. It was a good meeting. I guess so. I mean, I totally got the speaker until she said that taking care of herself now means getting her nails done. Manicures and pedicures signify spiritual growth now. No, she said she was, she has the maturity to hold down a job now. And she pays with her own money to get her nails done instead of stealing the money to have them done. Holy St. Louis, I'm going to meetings to hear thieves speak. Isn't that just a crock of... Bridget, she was saying she used to steal. Whatever. I'm hungry and nobody's up, so let's go get coffee and holes at Dunkin' Donuts. Look, here's some money. That's not your purse. Put the money back. It's my mother's. Put it back. And... Your holy little nun routine might have worked with your father. It doesn't work with me. Come on, you're not 10 anymore. You cannot take things that do not belong to you. Fine. I'll go take a shower then. Is that okay? Can I take a shower? Go. I'll run out to Dunkin' Donuts. I should have realized how grumpy you'd get without breakfast. I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, don't go out. I was just about to put on some more coffee when the two of you came in from your AA meeting. Oh my gosh, Maggie. Did we waken you? Sorry. Was, I always have my coffee in that corner. It's my favorite view, looking out toward the water. And no, you didn't waken me. I've already had my beach walk and today's canning day. Thought someone would prepare the kitchen for the onslaught of amateurs who volunteered last week. You oh. are something. Oh. oh, hey, we still need to pick the fruit. I got the peaches picked. Seagulls had me wake up before five. You rascal, I wanted to help. Oh, you still can. The blueberries are the backbreakers. I leave them to you and whatever volunteers you can get. Done. <coughs> well, that doesn't sound so good. Oh, it's probably just some allergies. I wasn't spying just now, didn't want to intrude. I've never heard Bridget be argumentative in her life. Amazing. I think she's the kind who could never bring herself to offend a member of her family. Like mm. she can't handle any of you thinking badly of her. So she never argued with us. <laughs> she's moving through rough waters, but she'll be fine. Well, your assurances are such, well, thank you, Aspara. Every day is the present, so we call it a gift. Mm. No. Wait, I got that wrong. Wait, every present. Anyway, don't let Bridget fool you. She's not fragile. What's got her most upset is that her image as some kind of saint has been shattered. Well, she's carried that image around since kindergarten. Her teacher, Sister Agnes Patrice, was a pretty young thing. From the time Bridget laid eyes on her, that's all she wanted to be. <laughs> I warned my husband, told him we couldn't send the kids to Catholic school. The church was flat out nuts in the 70s, dismantling saints and taking their last days off the calendar. Defrocking priests who protested for human rights instead of going after the real criminals behind the Roman collars. But don't get me started. Oh, well, come on. I've got uh, pastries and fruit to set out. As they exit, Shania steps out from the shadows of her laptop. She's up to something. Loretta, unseen by Shania, emerges from hiding in the doorway. Both Loretta and Shania have heard the entire conversation. Shania sits, opens up her laptop, and starts typing while the doorbell rings. I'll get it! 
I wouldn't want your writing up their conversation to be interrupted. I'm only doing character studies. Of course you are. Aren't you just the most precious thing out delivering packages so early? Thank you. Oh my goodness, he was cute. Do you use your material for blackmail? Of course not. I try my hand at short stories, little dramas, like the ones around here. There are no little dramas here, just outbursts of the human experience. Stand by, I'll be curious to see how you characterize the victimized Bridget. I think she's sincerely sweet, damaged, but sweet. Oh, honey, you really are new to this family. You'll get over the thrill soon. I hope not. <laughs> I'm finding that writing about them helps me appreciate how colorful human nature can be. That way, I don't judge. I don't sit around. Analyze and exploit. Wow, did Jackie get hooked up with such a decent human being? Oh, come on. What? You're not a decent human being? I'd always heard that drummers in Irish pub bands were so upstanding. Your kids like the music in the pub. A lot. I met them first and they introduced me to Jack. Save those facts for someone who's interested. Fair enough. But you know what, Loretta? <laughs> Here's a fact you should be interested in. It. Jack didn't leave you so he could be with me. There's no reason that I can see for you to be resentful toward me. But you seem determined to be angry at Jack's and my happiness. You've got an exciting life and, and your kids speak so lovingly about you, so. My daughter finds you fascinating. She's amazing. Don't you love that she wants to go to grad school for international studies? And where's the tuition for that gonna come from? See, I, I think that's what you're worried about, money. Mm -hmm. Look, there are tons of funding sources she qualifies for. I've been helping her with the applications. Her grades are terrific. You've been helping her? But international studies? Fuck! I always believed she was destined to go into the film industry. She was working in the film industry. She told me that her dream dwindled when Blockbuster went bankrupt and she lost her job at the checkout counter. You don't understand. Right from the start of their lives, I knew that- Come on, just because, because of their names? That predisposes them to enter the film industry? You've only heard Jack's version of this story. Fair enough. Let me hear we you. Thought, right. We thought the twins were going to be boys. Jack wanted to call them Agamemnon and Menelaus for crying out loud. What do you want? He's a classics professor. That would have been awesome. I wanted to come up with something that wouldn't make them sound like freaks. And when they ran the credits for the movie, bam, that was it. Bam, Quentin Tarantino. So your choice one. Sounds like you and Jackie were competitive with each other. Well, let me say this politely. You start prodding into Jackie's in my history and it's going to be on between you and me. Wow, okay. <laughs> I've been warned. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And what are you so entertained with, my love? Has no one prepared you for Jackie's Jake hero worship when he's here, Shania? Oh, look at you, Jacob Dunleavy. My goodness, where did you find that? It's in the attic. I was up there checking on the filters and vents. Loretta, do all those millions of QVC boxes in the attic belong to you? Anyway, uh, I saw Jake's suitcase. This was in it. I have no idea what his dear suitcase was doing in the attic. I needed the closet space. Jake? Now, who is he? Jake. <sighs> The man next door in that gorgeous house who thought Jackie hung the moon and vice versa. You have a neighbor named Jake who dresses like this? We did. He died 10 years ago. God love him. He left me all his signature Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> well, you better not be planning to wear that to your interview. <laughs> what an what interview. interview. <clears throat> exactly what I say. What interview? <laughs> no, I'm on vacation. Who does interviews on their vacations, right? People looking for jobs, Jack. That's who. Did you lose your job? What does that mean in terms of my child support, if I may ask? You may ask all you want, but number one, I didn't lose my job. And number two, it's not child support I send you. It's charity. I write off the checks I send you as charitable donations. The children are adults. There's no more child support. 
support. When you were on life support, he retorted. I'll gladly pull the plug. And then... Ah, here comes our little angel. Well, that's quite a shirt you've got on, Bridget. Somehow reminds me of the old habits nuns used to wear. I, I know. I'm trying to put a Comic-Con character together. Thought I'd start with the costume. Look at the size of these pockets. <laughs> like, like the pockets in the garments of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, who used to hide food for the poor, hungry people. And then she'd sneak out of the castle and feed them. <laughs> What's this, a food bank history lesson? <laughs> St. Elizabeth was martyred for being so kind. Bridget, sit, have some food. Your mind uh, always does better when there's food in your stomach. Now, all of you lovies, come on, eat. I do not know how my little lamb managed all that ghastly fasting for some 20 years. What bad habits it must have gotten your body into, sweetheart. There are no bad habits. I loved my holy habit. It was that synod or council of men who took our habits from us, the habits that gave us our dignity. Well, yes, yes, uh, there's that. But there's also the low blood sugar brought on by your fasting. Not eating is never a good thing. I never minded the fasting for communion's sake. Communion was the best part of my day. The altar wine. Here, eat this now, sweetie. I forget, Mom. Why did you name me Bridget? Oh, my goodness. She's the patron saint of Ireland. St. Patrick's almost as famous as she is. Bagora. So maybe I should keep my name for Comic-Con. Yes. Good thought. But let's talk about making the preserves. Your mother has already picked a ton of peaches. They're sitting on the back porch in bags. I love peaches. Will there be any for my... Uh, 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 go on, Loretta. Uh, make your blast off or bullet, whatever you have, whatever that is. Anybody else want one? Okay, I'll leave it out and you can use it after me, but be sure to clean it up when you're done. Oh, by the way, QVC has some on sale right now. I'll get credit if you say I recommended that you buy one. I all wondered if anyone would suspect or them if they made Nutriblasts, which were so three years ago, if they made Nutriblasts out of the ex-wife and the QVC items delivered hourly to her. Scene four. About five hours later, lights up on the living space empty. The Nutribullet's loud and annoying sound can be heard in the high gear in the kitchen when it stops. Oh, thank the good Lord. Loretta, please tell us you're finished with that machine. Done. Uh, Loretta, they have juicers now that are so much quieter. Amen, sister. Oh, please, dearest God, no more. I was here first and your canning materials are on the, in my way. Actually, Loretta, I was here first. Turn that damn machine off and let us finish, will you? She loaded it up with bourbon. Ha! <laughs> no! Oh, no, she did not. Oh, yes, she did so. Oh. <laughs> you girls, settle down before you hurt yourselves. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> oh, so you're out here, Loretta. Oh, you. Escaped. It's a madhouse in there. Not exactly. They're just trying to have fun. Maybe you could join the fun and help them clean up all the debris you created while making that. I made a month's supply. Yes, and took up all my freezer space. This one's really good. Mm, you should try it. Oh, thank you. I've had a V8. No mess. I put some old granddad in it. Come <laughs> on, you want some? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, in there. Don't you break that. Oh, Loretta, did I see you doing laundry today? Yes, just cleaning up my stuff and a little outfit I ordered for you on QVC. You will love it. Wait. Honey, I've told you I can't wear the stuff you buy me. Don't waste your money. Okay, but it is your color. Are you sure? Mm. All righty then. I, I think it'll fit me. So... You have been doing laundry. 
Why did you need to use the washer? I would have let you know if there were the case, if that was the case, but dear, you did three loads of your laundry here, not at your house. Well, Shania did five loads of laundry a couple of days ago. And there are two of them that she's washing for. She also did sheets and they are in from out of town. I counted on the calendar today. You've been here 20 days. And I've loved every minute of keeping you company. Well, most of the time. I mean, I especially like my afternoons in the hammock. Oh, isn't that nice to know? Mm. <laughs> So, if you don't mind my asking, when are you leaving? When are you leaving? Oh, well, leaving. I am willing to stay here with you as long as you need me. Oh, I can't deal with this. I know. Aren't they annoying? Maggie, trust me, I try. I meant you, I can't deal with in fact, that. I know that you're overwhelmed with all the company and, and by my generosity, I get that. I get you. Remember, we go way back. Oh, hey, can I ask you, when does your cleanie laney come? The tub is getting a little icky. You get me? Well, get this. You clean the damn tub yourself because I cannot afford a cleaning lady. No cleaning lady? Oh, Maggie, this does not sweeten the deal for me. Not at all. Deal? What deal? Ooh, I need air. I'll be outside in my hammock. Oh, it's Jake's hammock. Mom, you, you all right? Of course I'm all right. Why wouldn't I be? I have a house full of people who were supposed to have left a week ago. Really? Who? <laughs> gotcha. Hey, here, sit down. You know, we're all just trying to pitch in and then help. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool when people can enjoy themselves in your kitchen while they're making peach preserves, huh? <laughs> Why aren't you in there with them? I was busy dealing with the mother of my grandchildren, who are magnificent human beings, I must say. Yeah, they're, they're turning out great. I know they both plan to come in and see you. Really? Why? Mom, they, they love you. Couldn't be here for your birthday, so they want to come in, celebrate, and see if they can help. What? Everybody suddenly think I need help. And sure don't you bring out the best in us, Mrs. Dunleavy. <laughs> I finished you in the yard, by the way. Uh. <gasps> it's beautiful. What happened? Did you take a gardening course or something? I, I did, but mom... <laughs> I'm, I'm busted. What? Mom, um... The yard always turned out a mess when I was a kid because dad sat on the porch drinking his whiskey, shooting a BB gun at me. What? Yeah, God's honest truth. I can't tell you now that he's gone to, well, to wherever the hell he ended up. So, uh, so yeah, he, he'd wait till you were shopping for groceries and tell me to do the lawn. I had to dodge the BBs. That's why it always looked like I ran them over into the bushes. <laughs> Because I did. I, I had to so I wouldn't get hit. Dearest Lord God, that is not funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, no, it, it is. Uh, you know, I, I, it used to be scary when I, when I saw how much fun the old man was having. I, and I started playing along like I was one of those games on the boardwalk that you shoot at, you know. It, the good part was the lawn got done really, really fast. I am outraged. Why didn't you ever tell me about that? It seems kinder to let you think the hum of the lawnmower is what put the old man to sleep on the porch, not the booze. He'd be out for hours, remember? Mm. <laughs> you know, Jake always came over and laughed. You know, you made it seem like a game. We really had so much damn fun doing it, the yard. The years I spent putting up with neighbors telling me I needed to get you glasses <laughs> or a mental evaluation. Whatever. Hey, uh, I got a shower. Um, I have... Uh... You have some kind of appointment, don't you? Is there anything you should be telling me? Uh, Mama, I don't want you to worry or get your hopes up, but uh, 
Positions for professors who teach the classics are pretty few and far between, right? Well, that's one of the things wrong with our society. No sense of antiquity, heritage, history, old stuff. I am the choir and you're preaching. Amen. You made me so proud the way you followed your heart. But I've always hated your being so far away. Personally, always treated me well. And, and my job is always secure. But, you know, bam, Erasmus University has declared bankruptcy. Wouldn't you know? Just when the house is finally paid for. Ooh, uh, do not tell that last piece of information to Loretta, please. She'll want more money. Promise me you won't tell her. I wouldn't tell her if her ass were on fire. Of course, I know you two have a special bond and all, but, and so I don't mean to badmouth her. Well, wait, what did you just say? Your ex-wife and I have no special bond. I show her respect because of the twins, but she annoys the hell out of me. She always makes it sound like you're BFFs. Oh, please. I think she means well, but she is forever compulsively buying me all these gadgets and dietary supplements that I never use. And the makeup she buys for me. <gasps> no one but Loretta ever wears makeup at the shore. See, I thought you had asked her to come live here with you or something. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, she has that darling cottage we bought her. Then why is she here? Maybe it's because being a smart entrepreneur, I rented my house out for the summer. It'll pay my taxes and get me my trip to study fashion in Amsterdam. You people have no idea how ch challenging it is to survive in so society today. You're right. I can only imagine the challenge that survival must be for someone who has traveled the world to study fashion trends and has yet to apply for a job that, that would utilize those skills. Well, hadn't you mentioned applying for some marketing job? I'll do it when I'm ready. Right now I'm inter interning with the Chamber of Commerce. They're not paying you? I get free lunch once a month. Look, you cannot force creativity. Okay, the bottom line, I cannot have you forcing yourself on my mother. Doorbell rings. The, the grandmother of my son and daughter, her only grandchildren, unless you'd like to categorize that child in the kitchen you call a wife. Just, just stop, just stop. Let's, let's not say things we were going to wish we could take back. Bravo, son. Jake used to say that. Let's not say thing. I'm glad you remembered that. He used to say it all the time, especially when I was mad at dad. You know, Jake could say, Think of the good things he's done for you. Were there any good things? You know, when I was little, he gave me the, the uh, paper rings. Remember those red and gold bands that went around his cigars? Oh, for pity's sake. What else? Nope. Nothing else comes to mind. Well, I, for one, do not have time nor care to drudge up anything good that man might have done. I'm sorry, Maggie. Besides, I'm almost late for my manicure. How have I kept from strangling you? You know you'd miss me. Put this in my room, will you? She exits as the phone rings. Maggie answers. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Saturday afternoon. I think I can. Well, I, I'll be ready. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, son, I want to hear more about your job right now, but I, I've got to clean up the kitchen. She exits as Jackie heads to the bedroom area with the package. The phone rings again and he answers. Uh, yes, uh, this is her son. Oh, thanks for getting back to me. Um, sure, yeah, Friday morning at 8.30. Okay. Thanks, doctor. Oh, she's been in to see you already about that cough? Of course. Got it. Uh, thanks. We'll be there. Right. Right. Um, yeah, goodbye. Thank you. Oh, those girls are fast. Preserves are done. Wax is on and the kitchen is clean. <laughs> my, my, life is good. Did I hear the phone, son? Yeah, uh, you did, Mom. It was Dr. Simmering. <laughs> Whatever would he <coughs> call about? I had called him to make an appointment for you. He got back to me. I I'm worried about that 
cuff of yours. Oh, it's probably nothing. And he said you never checked in at the lab for the uh, tests ordered on your lungs four months ago. Mom, what's going on? A lot's going on. Your sister needs a home. You're losing your job. Bridget's court costs were higher than I thought they'd be. I stopped paying my insurance premiums. And Mom, you can get Medicaid. I'm sure of it. I don't want you to worry now. I've got some good, solid plans in place. Now, how about I promise to tell you all about my plans after your interview, okay? Um, and if you promise to please say nothing to the others, now I mean that. Not one word to any of them. Jackie, very sad, hugs her. Lights fade, end of act one. Scene one, Maggie enters the eating area wearing a sun hat. It's four hours later. Shania enters from the kitchen. Betty enters from the kitchen. Where in the world is the tablecloth? I swear I handed a tablecloth to Bridget. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. I shouldn't have done that. I wonder where my poor little darling is. Loretta enters blowing on her fingernails. Here I am. You asked me to be back in time for dinner. I did. I remember asking Bridget to put the tablecloth on the table and then put the vase with the roses at the center. But I do not remember asking you to be back for dinner. Bring flowers of the fairest. Bring flowers of the rarest. From garden, of garden and woodland, woodland, woodland and hillside and vale. Our full hearts are swelling, swelling. our Our glad voices voices telling the praise of the loveliest rose of the May. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was beautiful, sweetheart. I hadn't thought of that hymn since your eighth grade May procession. (laughs) It kind of just flitted into my mind. Mm. I thought I'd remind everyone of how sweet life used to be. Mm. My my Comic-Con character could do that. Maybe my name could be Nostalgia. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if Nostalgia was the May Queen? Wasn't, wasn't I the May Queen? No, but you are a gift from God. <laughs> Thanks. I'm still trying to get my costume together. I think that'll inform how I proclaim my superhero self. 
I think I could do May Queen Aspera. I wouldn't include roses with thorns for props. Those roses remind me of how much I like to drink rosé wine. <laughs> Mom, do we have any rosé? Help me bring in the platters from the kitchen. Wow, somebody still cleans up great. Did you get dressed up for dinner for me? Ha ha ha. I do have a dinner appointment, actually. Mom, could I please borrow the car? Uh, where are the keys? I've got them in here, in my pocket. Just grab them. My nails aren't completely dry yet. Ah, good luck, son. <clears throat> oh, he's got a job interview. Where? Near here? Uh, Stalker University, just 20 minutes away. He's moving back? He got fired, didn't he? You see, I knew it. Careful there, Loretta. You're going to mess up your nails. No, I'm not. So let me guess. Jackie pissed the Dean off for too many times and got fired. How am I supposed to make my mortgage payments? He did not get fired. Dang, woman... Like so many small private academic institutions, Holy Erasmus University is declaring bankruptcy and is closing its doors. There's an opening in classics at Stalker, so he's applying. He's not going to have trouble getting recommendations? Why would he? Jack was unanimously approved as the new dean of the classics department, which is not going to happen now. Because they're closing. I'm right, right? Yes, dear. Loretta, how in the hell could you have mortgage payments? Jackie and I gave you the house you live in. Oh, nice. You remortgaged the house, haven't you? Oh, stop acting like I committed a crime. I don't have the luxury of sitting around all day writing haikus or penny dreadful novels or whatever it is you do. Yeah, whatever I do. I hope Jackie gets the job. We'd love to be near you, Maggie. We're so not mountain people. I know he loves the shore and I'm delighted to hear you do too, sweetie. Self-acceptance brings our world into focus. It would be a miracle from heaven if you two lived here. Possibilities and miracles are one and the same if you walk the walk. You must eat at Chinese restaurants a lot. <laughs> if Jack gets the job, where is he going to live? He and I are a package deal, Loretta. So the question would be, where are Jackie and Shania going to live? Well, as long as it's not here. Wouldn't that be awkward? Not if you'd leave, Loretta. I can leave, Mom. In fact, I will leave right now. How about I get some beer? If anybody wants beer with their sandwich. How about can... I smell your breath, hmm? No, pet. If anyone stays, it'll be you. Actually, Maggie, Bridget could look at apartments. Get a little space, a little responsibility. I'd be happy to help her. By the way, Escargo, where is it you said you live? Oh, wait a minute, you didn't say, did you? But more to the point, where do you live? Now that you ask, Ms. Spielberg. What? Spielberg? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Don't grow up and face farts. What kind of advantage does anyone have with a name like Dunleavy? I changed it to Spielberg with the divorce decree. It was ingenious strategy on my part. Think about it and you'll agree. You did not change the twins' names, did you? Fear not, I don't have enough money to change their names. Aspergers, how did you know about the name change? Do not change the subject again, please. You are going to tell us what you're doing here. She's my guest, unlike you, Mrs. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm on vacation. This, here, this is someone's idea of a vacation? Yes, and I'm having a wonderful time. I always wanted to take a vacation in one of these seashore houses, but never could afford it. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you for this treat. Well, you are so welcome, Aspera. But seriously, may I ask you how much longer your vacation is? Till the end of next week. The doorbell rings. Oh, dear heavens, I'm going to have to work fast. Oh, Mommy. What? Are, are, are we going to have a surprise going away party for aspartame? A2, Brute. And with your spirit. Please, no parties. Oh, come on. It would be fun. 
I don't enjoy myself at parties. I used to too much. Parties are a lot of work too. Yes, they are. And, and I, I'm, I'm here to help. I'm very good at cleaning up afterwards. I especially love to clear the glasses that are still half full of wine. And then each you time are I a precious lamb to offer your assistance that way. <laughs> Mom, you said you had a party last fall. Yes, for Bernice and Gladys. They were the only ones at the party since everyone else has either died or moved to Florida. Was it a birthday party? No, a farewell party. The pair of fools sold their houses on the beach here and moved to the Southland Swamp. Ew, they moved to the swamps? Well, some people call it Florida. I take it you aren't planning to move to Florida? Oh, no. Even though there's someone there, I'd really like to, mm, well. To see? Hmm? Oh, Maggie. You've got a boyfriend, don't you, in Florida? Loretta, no, I don't. Florida is overrated. I mean, how did someone sell all Northerners on the idea that they should retire to sunny, citrusy Florida? The Chamber of Commerce wants us to completely ignore the medical fact that citrus is the worst possible thing for seniors' bladders control. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Anyone else really glad to know that? Apostrophe, seriously, how did she know about Loretta's last name is now Spielberg? She gave me her card. L. Spielberg, life coach and certified divorce coach. <laughs> what? How do you coach people to get divorced? Huh, bet you teach them to make neutroblasts. <laughs> <laughs> Loretta, I'm sorry. <laughs> really, I am sorry. <laughs> Do you have many clients? <laughs> Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to build a base. One step at a time. One day at a time. That's terrific. So what's on everyone's agenda now? Well, it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow, so I guess beach walking is out. Hey, I've got about a dozen board games in my car. Ooh, sounds like an advanced addiction there, asterisk. I make house calls sometimes, Ms. Spielberg. Board games are a fun way to help a person not drink. Board games make me drink. She, she might have a problem then, right, Asra? I, I, I'm sorry, Loretta is insulting you. I'm sorry if Loretta is insulting you. If you find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. Oh, God, holy mother, what in the freaking hell does that even mean? Aspar, do you even listen to yourself? Does anybody listen to what she is saying? She sounds like a freaking fortune cookie. They're slogans, Loretta. She's really good at them. Oh. <laughs> slogans are wisdom written in shorthand. Like trying to convince your sponsor you haven't been drinking is the ultimate outcome of stinking thinking. Oh. Hey. Hey, uh, everyone, isn't, isn't there a movie theater around here? Yes, let's go to the movies. I wonder what's playing. Here in the land, time forgot. Wouldn't it be nice if there was like a big 12-plex movie theater? To fit in with this quaint family vacation environment? How much fun would it be to be able to see something touted as visually stunning, a, a major triumph, heartbreakingly poignant, something that's been made in the last 10 years? I'd settle for electrifying or explosive or intoxicating. <laughs> I think the closest cineplex is in Pleasantville, about 40 minutes away. Too far. Hmm. The only thing playing locally besides Bring Your Own Home Videos Night is Sean the Sheep. Never mind. No, no. no. Uh, how about we all clean the house? There's someone coming Saturday. I need the place to look really nice. Oh, well, you tell us what needs done and we're on it. I love your young energy, sweetheart. Maggie Dunleavy, you, I'm telling you, you've got a boyfriend, don't you? Ooh, that is who is coming and why you wanted us gone. Oh, oh my, oh my gosh. Are, are you going to marry him, Mom? Let, let's have an engagement party. Oh, get a flipping grip, girls. Why in the hell... No, 
Oh, how shall I explain? Oh, mm. uh, I kind of won a, well, a competition. I got this email and... Oh, God, dear heaven, she fell for the Prince of Nigeria scam. I knew she'd get taken for everything she owns one of these days. That is what I am talking about. It's an auctioneer coming. Am I right? It was a long time ago. I used to be a good singer and dancer. Uh, like me, see? That's it, Bridget. I'm making you a pot of coffee. Bridget, I practiced a lot. I was actually good. So, Maggie, you won a prize for singing and dancing? Well, before the Mickey Mouse Club, there was a show on every Sunday night, the Amateur Hour. I used to watch it and imitate the song and dance routines that won. And it was fun. People called in to vote on who they thought should win. The original Star Search, huh? Yes. My aunt got me lessons for my eighth birthday and then... What, Maggie? Because I did so well with my dance lessons and I practiced with the stars on Sunday nights, my aunt took me to auditions for the Mouseketeers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You were a Musketeer? Yes, I was. Mom! Mommy! Mom! Which one were you? Well, dear, I was Maggie. Now, a lovely young man is putting together a documentary about the former Mouseketeers and what they've done with all their careers since the Mickey Mouse Club. He's coming Saturday to film an interview with me. Uh, that's why I need to get this house clean. We can do this. Let's do this. Oh, no, right? Why didn't I know this, Maggie? Can he film me dancing? I think he just wants to know what I've done with my career. It all sounds so interesting. And what did you do with your singing and dancing career? Oh, for heaven's sake, I've been dancing over at Billy's Bong on the mainland for years. What? what? Yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday, they call me the pole cat. <laughs> Lights fade. Scene two. Lights come up on the living room. A large chair sits at the center. Betty stands behind it while Maggie paces in front of it. It's Saturday. Bridget pushes a dust cloth around, around, and when no one is looking, she opens drawers, cabinets, anything that opens. Jackie enters wearing a Jake shirt. He almost runs into Shania, who enters from the kitchen. Seriously, Maggie, it's important that you be comfortable. And if he's going to feel new, the color of your chair is very complimentary to your complexion and your blouse. Mom, you look terrific in that color. I mean that. Yeah, it's really nice. Are you going to let me do your hair, or are you sticking with wearing the hat? We should have gotten you ears, Meg. Mouse ears. Mouseketeers. Uh, you're right, Loretta. We blew it. Sorry, Mom. I could have thought of it, uh, but it, <coughs> but didn't. <coughs> a rearview mirror does not a GPS make. Mom, you know, you don't have to do this. Remember, the doctor said not to stress yourself at all. Oh, just hand me the water, honey, and I'll be fine. Shania, my hair's like, uh, well, it's like fishnets from blowing in the wind all these years. But if you thought you could actually make it look nice. Uh, Absolutely. Come on. Oh, well. Oh, this place looks just great. You kids are taking care of everything. Thank you. Deep breath. No need to be tense. Truth be told, I have every reason to be uptight about this. I'll put this vacuum away. I'll help. Haven't seen this much excitement around here since the twins were born, huh? Oh, this was such a great night. The movie theater actually showed a film people wanted to see. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> that wasn't the only surprise, was it, huh? <laughs> twins, one boy, one girl, not two boys. It blew me away how how beautiful they were. Yeah. I had felt so fat and ugly for so long, you know? Like, how could such beautiful babies come from such ugly fat? I thought you were beautiful when you were pregnant. Your skin glowed and your, your lips reminded me of the roses on mom's trellis. You kept in solid shape, you remember? We walked three miles every night. You were gorgeous. You mean it. That's so sweet. Oh, Jackie, Jack, 
what happened to us? What happened to us was you ran off with that lifeguard. That's what happened to us. Where is he these days? In Hawaii, I think. All he wanted was to be on the beach. All that sand, yuck, you know? When we split, I realized that I'm probably a mountain girl. Yet here I am at the shore. Quentin loves the mountains too. He loves the mountains more than he loves his mother. That's crazy talk, Loretta. You know, he's really involved in lots of activities out there. He's climbing, hiking, skiing. You should come out to see him. I guess I've been afraid it'd be too awkward with someone else sleeping in my bed. And since when did you ever let awkward stop you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Tarantina, now, now she's a beach baby like me. The phone rings. I wish your mother'd get a cell phone. That ringing is so invasive. It's her house, Loretta. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I'm her son. Would you like me to get her? Really? Uh, you don't say. Yeah, those poor folks haven't been able to catch a break since the hurricane, have they? Yeah. Um, fine. I, I understand. And I'll tell her. Yeah, oh, uh, maybe another time. Sure. We, we heard the phone. Was it, was it the newspaper? Aspera and I called and told them. It, that was, the, uh, it, was, the do it was the documentarian, documentarian uh, the filmmaker. Seems his grant money for this project was pulled. He won't be doing it. Damn it! There goes Maggie's opportunity to reveal the dirty truth about her pole dancing. Not totally on board with even wanting to know. Me either. I was raised to believe I'm Irish, not Polish. Uh, Bridget, you, you, we are Irish. What are you mm -hmm. saying exactly? Mom, mom's a, a pole dancer. But if I remember correctly, it was daddy who taught me the Highland Fling and all the Irish step dancing. So he was the Irish parent. Why would mom have not told us her pole dances? What Potter. might they be? The sausage strut? the kielbasa crunch, the cabbage roll. Get your tickets while you can, folks. I'll be appearing in the clamshell lounge all week. Wait, you're doing stand-up comedy and mom's teaching Polish dances? Where have I been? Oh, where have you been? In the convent and rehab. Bridget, my darling, you're letting your imagination carry you away. There's a very simple explanation about the pole dancing, which I've prepared for the documentarian. Why don't you practice on us? May I? I had volunteered at church to give line dancing classes to senior citizens who wanted to be sharp and better able to dance at their grandkids' weddings. A little alley cat, a little New York, New York, you know. The church had no space available for me to have the classes. So one night when I'd stopped at Billy's Bong for a nightcap. Wait, you what? Honestly, I have tried to keep an eye on her. Well, save the drama and outrage for your own life, Loretta. Ugh. So, Ma, th there you were at Billy's. Yes. Uh, well, his mom was my best friend from high school. And you kids remember my friend Susie. Well, on her deathbed, she asked me to check in on Billy regularly. And I always keep my promises. So I'm guessing Billy said you could have your classes there? Yes, when I saw all those poles out there on the dance floor, I mean, why would you block the dance floor like that? No way to run a business, but that's none of my business. I asked Billy to please never take the poles down. Well, he was thrilled. Uh, seems the country's been trying to shut him down because of those polls. I started a petition to keep them and presented it to the city hall. I got 1,500 signatures and the polls stayed. You wanted the polls for your clients to hold on to. Exactly. I knew they'd be perfect for people who walk with canes or walkers and still want to dance. They hold on to the poles. It's gotten to be quite the in place on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. Sounds more like a rehab center than a dance club. You know, it is just 
that. We had no poles or dancing at any of my rehabs. So Loretta now knows why mom's the pole cat. Satisfied? Mom, we're actually Polish? It's okay. I, I mean, I'd be okay having that heritage. I, I, I wouldn't feel angry or cheated or, or, or lied to you by daddy who pretended for all those years that we were totally Irish. Polish nuns still wear the holy habit. Maybe it's in my blood to still want to wear the holy habit. Aspara, please deal with Scarlet over there. Don't let her tear down the drapes. I wish I felt as ready as you all have made this place look. Maggie, when I fixed your hair, you did a little dance. Oh, when I looked in the mirror and didn't see an old hag, you bet I danced. I love what you did, you miracle worker. What? Now she's freaking Helen Keller, the miracle worker? I believe Annie Sullivan was the miracle worker. No, check your fortune cookies, Ashmina. It was Helen Keller. Loretta, couldn't you just say some nice things? Can you say things nicely? I think that's probably hard for a Jersey broad to do. Wait, do you guys see how limber Mags is? Mags? Really? So, the dance you did in the bedroom, was that like one of the dances you teach? I don't actually teach them. I lead them in whatever dance they want to do. And now, could you get that little boom box, honey? Billy gave it to me. It's real easy to use. Hit the power button, please. Go ahead, Mags. Show us. Now, get in a line, fast as you can. Dancing's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'll bring your heart and soul right on back to you. Come on, follow me. Let's get stepping. A one and a two and a three and a ha ha. One and a two and a three. Woo! That was fantastic. I love dancing. Jack, why did we stop dancing? Why didn't we ever go anywhere or do anything? We, we were homebodies, Loretta. No, I'm not a homebody. I've never been a homebody. You and I met at a club in the city. For two years before we got married, we went dancing every week. Mom. That dance, was that one from our Polish heritage? <laughs> no, my little gift <clears throat> that keeps on giving. But wasn't it fun? Maybe we could do that for the filmmaker? He's not coming, Mom. Mm -hmm. That's who called earlier. Yeah, it seems the money for your project has been reallocated to, for another one that the filmmaker has proposed. So I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Drops into a chair almost in a faint. Uh, how about everyone stand back and give mom some air? I'll get you a glass of water, Maggie. Mm. I've got this. I know where everything is in this house. Yeah, the spigot would have been really hard to locate. Maggie, are you all right? You were really looking forward to this. He didn't want to reschedule? No, he, he said he can't afford to do it without the funding. Oh, doesn't that just pluck the duck? Praise be to St. Patrick. <laughs> Mom, do you, what? <laughs> I'm thrilled and relieved. Now I can just move forward without any embarrassment about the Mouseketeers. Being a Mouseketeer is nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, well, maybe a little bit, but... Not at all. They were a cultural <laughs> institution. They w were... But as the pig in that book said, some Mouseketeers were more equal than others. Oh, just because you weren't a net Funicello. I, I think I found your scrapbooks. Uh, I, I, I was cleaning over there. You had pictures of kids with mouse ears. Oh, just stop, will you? It's not that big a deal. There were the three teams or tiers of Mouseketeers. Ah, the red team was the top. Karen, Chubby, Darlene, Bobby, and of course, Annette. Um, they were on every day. Then there was the blue team, Doreen, Tommy, Tim. They were on like once a week. I was on the white team. Well, wonderful. When did you kids go on? Every couple of weeks. Once a month. Mm. When other kids got sick, like, like a substitute? 
Mm. Never? Uh, what she said. I think we were on hold in case there was some kind of apocalyptic crisis where every other child in the world had disappeared. Well, that wouldn't have left a very large audience, would it? <laughs> so you see, it's a good thing the documentarian is not coming. Now, I can concentrate on selling the house. What? What? It's on, sweetheart. Mom, why would you sell the house? So I'd have money to donate to the little sisters. Of, well, now, what do they call themselves? The ones secluded up in the mountain, miles from civilization, sisters of the cloistered cliffs. They all wear macrame sandals. Bridget and I will go live in their convent for the rest of our days. No! Dearest God in heaven, no, do not do this! Sweetheart, you miss the convent. This is the perfect solution for both of us. The cloistered cliff climbers are the only ones I could find to take us. I offered them the income from the sale of the house for which they'll put a roof over our heads and food, probably nothing fancy, in our bellies. I, I was used to the convent. I'll get used to not being in the convent eventually. To be honest, the convent made me crazy. I suspect it was way, way more than the convent that did it to you, sweetie. And if you didn't want to be in the convent, why in the world did you stay? Gosh, I've asked myself that a million times, haven't I, Aspara? I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe because daddy loved me most when I was a holy nun of God. You know he did. That's true but he died 20 years ago. Look, we can talk about this later, maybe in intensive counseling. Just give me the keys to the house and no one will get hurt. hurt. Oh, excuse me, you do not get the keys to this. Go, sit yourself down, Mrs. Spielberg. And please do not interrupt Bridget again while she's having her breakthrough. You are trying to take this house from my mother and I won't let you give me the keys. No. Crying out loud, ladies, can't you just sit down and quietly discuss your issues? Oh, no, son, I don't think they can. They're too busy revisiting their middle school mean girls phase. Ladies, now stop. Stop! Aspera is here to save you from yourselves. Oh, what the hell, or who the hell are you supposed to be now, asphalt? She's Aspera. That's her Comic-Con costume. Or, or part of it, isn't it splendid? Aspera, I like it so much better when you have on your, your tights and your spandexy top, too. Oh my God, what sick insanity. You go to those freak show conventions? Think before you speak. They are not freak shows, nor should you snicker at them when you, when you do not understand. In actuality, they are a great deal of fun. Aspera traded in her drinking addiction for her addiction to Comic-Con, but the difference is Comic-Con hurts no one. Oops, I I'm sorry. I I I'm sorry, Betty. I mean, um, Aspera. She shared that at a, at a meeting. I shouldn't have. I, shouldn't I have. shall be fine with that, sister, as I am fine with the behavior I am up against with some of the pleasant company. Perhaps they do not understand what it means to rediscover one's inner child. Oh dear, here we go. Oh, what the hell do you mean by that? Rediscovering your what? I would not advise you to venture forth doing as I calculate that you were most inevitably an abomination even in your youth. Even in your youth, you old bag? Do not think you or that laptop are ever getting out of here with any of this, this, whatever is going on here. Are you listening to our superhero here? She's not even speaking like a... Oh, that's how she speaks when she's Aspara. No contractions, no sentence fragments. She carries the scales of justice. What else, Aspara? Oh, oh uh, tell them about the scales. Tell them. The scales. The scales are my weapon. They warn us to weigh our words. Mine will have to go on a diet later, because, honey, you've got a heavy earful right now. Loretta, grow up. Escrow, there's value in what you say about weighing your words. Yes, 
I should know. After my fifth time in rehabilitation. What? Really? You didn't sail through rehab the first time? No. It was the universe's way of delivering me to my true path of recovery through self-discovery. Oh, for the love of Mike. Yes, it was Mike, one of the counselors. He encouraged me to think of myself as some kind of courageous woman that I would admire. One of the other people doing rehab at the same time shared with us how much she loved Comic-Con. Well, she challenged us to invent a superhero character that redefined us. And Aspera is helping me find my superhero identity and my costume. Would you share with us what you've come up with? Mm -hmm. My superhero self is going to be a combination of Saint Elizabeth, Saint Bridget, the flying nun, and a dragon tamer. <laughs> but I'm still redefining myself and I haven't come up with a name yet. It didn't come to me as quickly as it did to Betty. Aspera! I redefined myself as Aspera, the bearer of truth about words. I seek and speak the truth about words, words that might hurt others. Is anyone listening to how she's speaking? Who does she sound like to you? Leslie Jones, Darth Vader, B. Arthur? Isn't she remarkable? <laughs> That's one way of putting it. I'm inclined to go with odd. <sighs> now, that's enough. If you all don't stop this instant, I'm going to put you out. Oh, I'm going to put it all out there. But what out there, Loretta? Everything on the table for everyone to see. Are we eating now? Bridget, did you ever take a vow of silence you could maybe reconnect with? Now look. You all know I got slimed by this family and thrown out of my home in Colorado. Loretta, this is not true. This I sensed. Whatever. Loretta, we've been over this. You walked away from us with Mr. Muscles for brains. You said hurtful things to us then and just like you're doing right now. How else can I get this family's attention? About what you really want? All I ever really wanted was for us to have fun. Let's go to the city. Let's go see a show. Let's go dancing. This family needed some fun because your husband, Maggie, was not good to you, and you know it, and you were scared to death of him. He wasn't nice to anyone. No wonder the cop never even got indicted for shooting and killing him. Wait, a cop shot Mr. DeLevy? Yeah, when Mr. D was drunk and waved his BB gun like he was going to kill the cop and the cop couldn't see it was a BB gun. He shot Mr. Dunleavy. I am sorry, Maggie. Don't be. So yeah, when Mr. Lifeguard asked me if I wanted him to show me a world of fun, I said, sure. I am tired of sitting around waiting for a Dunleavy to suggest something fun to do. I guess I should have told him to take a hike when he... Excuse me, Loretta, is this going to be a monologue because I'm going to need to reset my margins, if so? Do you know what you can do with your margins? Okay, <laughs> monologue it is. Just a freaking minute, Shania. You are getting a lot of mileage out of this family in more ways than I think we are aware. We're spilling our guts in honest conversations here. Well, what's your point? My point? We know nothing about you, sweetheart. You're writing us up like we're you're doing profiles for an arrest. And I, for one, protest. At least tell us about your shady past, Mr. Ms. Drummer in an Irish pub band. Well, I'd be glad to, but you know what? If I told you that I had been working in Mike O'Leary's pub band in Colorado as an undercover NSA agent. NSA? NSA. Uh, Northern, Northern S Sisters Sorry. of... National Security Administration. Checking whether or not Mike O'Leary's annual raffle contestants contests where the winner flies to Ireland for a week's vacation with Mike as your personal tour guide. Wait a minute. What? If I told you I was investigating Mike's raffle, that the CIA suspected his contest was really a money laundering cover for some lingering IRA sympathizers here in the U S if <coughs> I told you that, <laughs> would you even believe me? No, of course you wouldn't. See, my husband wouldn't even believe that. So, so we believe you actually did fall in love with Jackie. Of course. Yeah. We were really in love, went to Ireland, and then got married. Period. Was this before or after you met Jackie's family? Before. I figured any family that turned out to be a magnificent human being like Jackie was worth being a part of. No, wait. 
I believe it. Whatever the hell it was, you just crammed down our throats about this magnificent family. No, about the NSA. Something's not right with all this. Maybe someone. I am going to weigh my words very carefully here, Loretta. Me too, Loretta, you yellow-bellied, tardy-gated, butt-snorting, pig nut of a dog licker. Bridget, do you think this might be time to make an amend to... I don't want an amend. What I do want are keys to this house. Who's been looking after Maggie at this house? Would any jury convict me of homicide if I... I don't talk this, Maggie. Loretta, you are speaking to claim something you never even owned in the first place. Like a dog born without a tail, but he chases it anyway. Exactly. You are chasing a dream, Loretta, and the dream is not a reality, so you will never be able to hold it. Ashtar, why don't you and your sidekick Robin find a convention and go hang out? Actually, I think Bridget almost made sense. Loretta, you're talking about owning something that's not yours. Loretta, sweetheart, I've been watching you for years, and I I do feel sorry for you. Why would that be, Mags? Because every friggin' thing you decide to do, either endear yourself to us, alienates you from us. And it's sad because I think all you ever really wanted was to feel, well, more of a part of a, this family in this household. It's a house of cards. Oh, I love that show. I do not understand it, but whenever they put it on at rehab, I watched it. Mostly, I kind of self self hypnotized, st staring at the keys hanging out of the pocket of whichever guard was on duty. Ding, ding, ding! Here, you all want the keys? Have them. May they unlock all the treasure treasure you've been looking for. I am afraid, however, you'll be disappointed with what you find: a dusty attic, out of level windows with gaping areas that allow more than gentle sea breezes through. So it needs a few repairs. Mom, um, don't get pulled into their nonsense. Loretta, back off. Whatever needs to be fixed and repaired, we can do that for you. And I didn't want to steal your thunder with the documentarian coming and all, but I got the job at Stalker. Oh. I can be nearby to help you. That's a lovely sentiment, son, but it comes a little late for me, as you know. I went to the doctors yesterday. You got your flu shot, right? No. Something's wrong. What? Well, after spending my life trying to make this place my family would hate to be torn away from. I keep coming back. You did something right. But this is just what I was saying. That man. My husband. Yes. He could have sucked the happiness out of heaven. This was your heaven and he sucked it dry. Anyone want a drink? I wanted it to be wonderful for my family here always. We did have fun, didn't we, Jackie? Yes, of course we did. Mom, mom, stop beating yourself up. This is, this is a cool, funky shore cottage. I love it. But I didn't want it to be a cool, funky cottage. I thought I was creating a better homes and garden architectural digest Victorian cottage by the sea. Yeah, like Jake's? Yes, just like Jake's. That's what I was going for, but never had enough money to do it correctly. But you're the one who did all that fixing up for Jake, right? Didn't he hire you after his wife died? He was going to sell it or something. Yes. He gave me all the money I needed to do whatever I wanted to do to fix up his house. It's gorgeous. What are those big hooks in the chimney? You never had them taken out, did you, Mom? I couldn't. They held that ridiculous blinking Santa that he thought you kids loved. We did. And, and when the, he added the sleigh with the blinking lights, they, they all looked like they were riding off into the night. They did? Absolutely. Jake was amazing. I still miss him. Hmm. You know, 10 years ago when Loretta and I bought, uh, brought the kids in to have Christmas with mom, Jake was up there in a howling winter storm storm fixing Santa so so he'd blink and well I was uh, standing on the ground hollering that he was a darn fool to be risking his life like that <laughs> he hollered back can't disappoint the kids 
He blew me a kiss, slipped, and fell right off the roof and died at my feet. How awful. You think? Tried celebrating a Merry Christmas after that. Well, he left it for me to take care of till the real owner was ready to move in. But who actually owns that house now? Wait, wait a minute. Did you say he blew you a kiss? Yeah, he blew me a kiss every night. So I'd have sweet dreams. When would you say it was this kiss blowing started? Oh, about a year before this guy was born. So Ma, what you seem to be saying here, what are you saying? That you were Jake's and my love child, yes. I'm so sorry if it shocks you, but it needed to be said. <laughs> don't be sorry. <clears throat> Oh, don't, don't be sorry, please. <laughs> That's the best news I've ever heard. Did dad know he wasn't my dad? No. As far as that went, dad was blind. Oh, my dear God. Good God. Daddy was blind? I, I never noticed. Why didn't anyone ever tell me? He didn't, he didn't use a cane or anything. God bless. Sweetheart, your daddy was blind the way he couldn't see the happy life we were trying to give him. He saw a different reality than we did. I, I think he always saw how wonderful you were, Bridget. Do, do, you, do you think that? Really? Uh, he, he smiled at me sometimes, daddy did. Especially when I dressed up like a nun. Yes, dear. That's exactly right. You all tried to give him happy, but I think he didn't want that. In other words, he liked having stuff to cry in his whiskey about. Well, don't look at me like that. I knew the guy. He was a nutcase. It's kind of a relief to know that Quentin and Tarantino aren't related to him. He was pretty scary. That's an awful lot for you to process, huh, Jack? Yeah, but I'm glad to know this because I've, I've always felt bad that I spent more time over there with Jake than here. And I like Jake more than I like dad and lots more. Anybody with half a brain cell would have liked Jake more than your dad. I mean, my husband was handsome and charming when I first met him, but after the alcohol got the best of him, I didn't know how to rescue us from all that. I, but here's my really important news. Jake, your real father left the house to me in trust for you, Jackie. I think you're ready to move in. Wait, wait, wait. Jake always liked me too, right? Jake left it to Jackie and to no one else. Loretta, look, I realize it's almost impossible for you to keep a roof over your head. Why don't you go live in the house in Colorado? But you'll have to promise to stay there once you've signed the cottage you own here over to Tarantina, if that's okay with Shania. So there are the keys. Now help me sell this place and I'm off to the little sisters of the cloister Qu cliffs and I'm taking Bridget with me. No! Bridget, oh, stop, no! stop, stop, no! <laughs> stop. I really thought you'd be thrilled about this. Now stop the tantrum. <laughs> Well, and tell me what it is you want. It's simple. What she wants is a drink. It's really all she can think about, period. She can't have one if she wants to stay alive. I've changed my mind. I don't want to stay alive. I'd like a drink, please. It's, I want a drink. Heavy emotional stuff for her to learn about her father. No, no, it's good to know. I hated how daddy, how, how mean daddy could get. I didn't know what else to do but, but to go into a convent. First class, take it out. Nevertheless, Bridget can't think very clearly about any long range plans right now, okay? If she keeps working her program, she'll learn how to be honest with herself. Then she can figure out what she truly wants. It's gonna be all right, eventually. Promise? Yes, I do. Right now, you're getting your sobriety legs. But Maggie, tell us, going off to the convent with Bridget, aren't you just trying to run away? Shut up with the insightful questioning, will you, asteroid? What the heck would she be running away from? Exactly. 
Maggie, tell us. I've got some bad news from the doctor yesterday. Uh, Do you want me to tell them, Mom? No, no, but thank you. I have advanced <clears throat> lung cancer. Jackie's going to help me set all my business affairs in order. Some business you're supposed to attend to is chemo, right? I do not like the sound of that therapy, even though I've had lots of friends do well with it. Look at this, all this hugging. It's only taken me how many years and a diagnosis of lung cancer to find the courage to tell you all the truth. How can I leave you now? You know, um, if you want to do some running away, how about we all run away to someplace fun with you together before you start with the chemo? We'll make it an extension of your, your birthday celebration. Yeah, come on, come on. Where, where, do, where do you want to go? Name it. Ireland. Any place. I'll wheel. We'll all take you. My treat. I'm getting a good raise with a new job and, and a mortgage-free house. He means... Like a vacation, not hospice or anything yucky. Right. Oh, that's silly. I couldn't go down there. Aha, uh -huh. I knew it. You want to go to Florida. You have an old flame or somebody special in Florida, don't you? I heard it in your voice the other day. Oh, the mouse. They always promised the Mouseketeers on the white team a trip to Disneyland, but they never took us. It was like wishing on a star. I'd settle for Disney World. You always used to sing when you wish upon a star. And you talk about Disney World, uh, going to Disney World. When you wish upon a star makes no difference where you are. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you took us to the beach after dinner almost every night to fly our Mickey Mouse kites, and, and you'd sing that. But I always thought it was a, a sad song. Remember, Bridget? When your heart is in your dreams, no request is too extreme. <laughs> the lights fade. Scene three. The scene transitions include a photo collage of the Dunleavy family at Disney World in poses from the vacation. Lights up on the living area of the house as it's been in previous scenes. It's a year later than the other scenes. Loretta enters with a floral arrangement that has the typical gold letter banner across. It's usually seen in funeral homes. As she sets it in place, Jackie enters carefully carrying a Creamins urn. He puts the urn on the end of the coffee table. I'll, I'll bring a tray in. Thanks. Thanks for all your help with this, Loretta. I should have come back to see her more. I knew your mom long enough to know what an independent spirit she had. She never expected you to go to the expense of coming in from Colorado to see her any more than you did. But I love it back here. I, and I loved her. I, I should have insisted. Honestly, she didn't mind. She knew you were avoiding Loretta. She was embarrassed the place wasn't in picture perfect shape. You know, like the showcase she always dreamed of making it. She was afraid you'd think she was getting too old to take care of it and that you'd ship her off to some nursing home. What in the world would make you even say that? She told me. Word for word. I swear, she did when you and the others were on Space Mountain in Florida. <laughs> I told her you never would have done that to her because you loved her so much. She said she finally realized that. She said that? <laughs> wow. Yes, and those summers you sent the kids back here to spend time with her and Loretta, she was very grateful to you for that. She was over the moon about them. Yeah, how about that? Hey, wh where are the kids? Loretta, here's Jackie. She re-enters with Betty and Bridget. They're still back at the reception visiting old friends. Loretta, the way you set up mom's plans for fixing up the house and, and all the family pictures on that table at the memorial service. It was amazing. Everyone was so impressed. <laughs> Who knew, right? I'm good at making events happen. Parties, celebrations like that. Besides Maggie pretty much had told me how she wanted her viewing and funeral to go. 
She definitely wanted the blueprints and material selection for the house's renovations on display. And the magazines that she got the ideas from. It's going to be beautiful. It really mattered to her. By the way, I had my business cards redone. You're not a divorce coach anymore? Oh, I am still that. But I've added events coordinator. I'm already making some contacts out in Colorado. She's still saying her name is Spielberg, by the way. So Tarantina's going to move into your house here at the shore, Loretta? I'll kind of be some kind of home base for her. You know, she got the scholarship to Princeton. I think she wanted to be near her Nana and me. And her father, your brother. So Loretta, you're going to live in the Colorado house with Quentin, right? Me, Quentin and his little ski bunny. Should be quite entertaining, but I cannot wait to get back there. It's really funny how things work out. And Jackie and I are going to be your next door neighbors. Who would have believed it? <laughs> okay. How about as soon as the kids, kids get here, we go fly kites. We can distribute Mag's ashes at the beach tomorrow like she asked. Oh, my gosh. I'll be right back. Forgot something. I'm sad too, guys, but aren't you really proud of the trip we gave her? You bet. Thank God we got to it before. You know, um, I never knew mommy could be so much fun. Oh, how about the way her face lit up like a Christmas tree when she saw Cinderella's castle? Precious. Oh, didn't she look like a breathless little girl when Mickey Mouse asked her to dance? Ah, oh, God love her. I never even knew mom loved to dance like that. You know I like to dance, right? <laughs> I think mom and I were alike that way, probably since I was her daughter and all. So Bridget, can I tell you again that I am shocked at how good you look in real clothes. I love the dress. Thanks. Shania helped me pick it out. Yeah, good choice with the dress there, sis. Okay, so are we actually still brother and sister or are, are you just calling me sis to be nice. I, I hate being confused. Of course, we're brother and sister. So the day we die. <laughs> Can't forget the ears. Okay, can we call it a day with the warm and fuzzy here? Cars heard pulling up. You're the kids. Let's head on to the beach uh, while we have the light. Well, we remember that she wanted them scattered in the morning when she always took her beach walks. Let's let her rest here with her cherished refurbishing plans, huh? Even after we distribute her ashes, she will always be with us in spirit. I got the kites just like mom asked. She would have laughed too. Shania, you've got the voice. Will you start us? Shania begins singing when you wish upon a star. Rest all pick it up and walk off in a little procession singing and carrying their kites. As the singing continues and the music comes up, Maggie's spirit steps forward from the shadows of her favorite spot where she always drank her morning coffee. She looks all around her living area, inhales her joy, whirls in a little dance, lifts the ears from the urn and puts them on her head. She looks at the plans on the table, looks around the house, listens to her loveys singing. As the stage lights fade, she looks heavenward and is flooded in a single spotlight of light. Blackout, the end. What I think was really great about the writing is um, there were a lot of uh, surprises as the uh, play went on. Things were getting revealed later and later. And I always like that when you're kind of surprised in the second act or things that you didn't know. There aren't big plays anymore. And this is a big play in the sense of 
the number of characters as well as the diversity of the characters and um, the kind of craziness and eccentricity of the characters I thought was really terrific. I have been writing myself a lot in this and I and I decided that I was either going to drink a tequila or I was going to be productive and I started fundraising and I started writing and trying to uh, you know educate myself on who needs what in the world and I felt I feel like writing has been an incredible outlet for me uh, so I want to hear from everybody I want to hear how everybody has sort of survived this moment in time The Actors Fund provides so many services that are life-saving for artists. There's money when people need rent money, when you need health insurance. And as we are right now in a time where the theater is decimated, um, we are dependent on the resources that the Actors Fund has um, raised and is now really having to spend. so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to donate to the Actors Fund. The information is below and stay tuned tomorrow. Same time, same place here at the New Works Virtual Festival. Have a great night.